amplifier power has gotten really cheap and that is awesome, but that cheap power creates its own set of problems. Let me explain. This is a Kenwood amplifier. It's rated for 500 watts at four ohms and a thousand watts at two ohms. I bought this amplifier specifically to power this subwoofer here. It's a Dayton Audio 10 inch Ultimax rated for 500 watts. I ran this setup for about a year and I've never run more than a thousand watts total to any of the subs in any of my systems. I remember back in the day when a thousand watts was a ton of power and it was stupid expensive. And now a thousand watts is dirt cheap, or at least it appears to be. There are a lot of great amplifiers that will get you a thousand watts at a low price, and I'll give you some links uh, down in the video description, but you gotta keep in mind that these amplifiers have some hidden costs. Right here is one of those hidden costs. This is my factory original stock alternator. It's a great alternator. It's lasted 18 years with no problem. It's rated for 135 amps of current, which is more than enough for this simple truck. It's got no luxury features. It has power windows and power door locks and air conditioning, and that's kind of it. Now, if half the capacity of the alternator is being used to run the truck, that means the other half can be used for accessories and add-ons. That means I've got less than 70 amps of current to power the radio, which really is a lot, but it's not enough to run a big amplifier. Best case scenario, if you have an amp that's 70% efficient and your charging system is running at 14.4 volts, you'll need about 100 amperes of current to power a 1,000 watt amplifier. Now I could still use a 1,000 watt amp in the truck because these calculations are theoretical Theoretical, based on running power into a resistor and in a car we play music and we get a much different result when we play music. More on that a little bit later. But for now, let's head over to the test bench and see what happens. Let's do a four ohm dyno run so I can show you just how awesome this amplifier actually is. We get 689 watts into four ohms at 1% THD, well above the 500 watt rating. At clipping, we get an astonishing 742, no, wait a second, 746 watts out of this 500 watt amp. That's almost 50% more than its rated power. And you can see from this shot, we have just over 14.25 volts DC going into the amplifier. And I want you to pay really close attention to that. That's gonna be really important later. Now I don't have a DC clamp meter, so I can't tell you how much current the amplifier pulled on that dyno run. And I can't calculate the efficiency of the amplifier. So a clamp meter is one of the items that's on my wish list. I set aside the money that my patrons generously donate to the channel specifically for purchasing test gear so that I can make better videos for all of you. So if you'd like to see more and better test gear on my channel, please consider joining these guys right down here on Patreon. And I wanna say a special thanks to my $25 patrons, Bo, David T, Bam Bam, Dylan, Stereo Lab LLC, and Baba. I feel like I've watched every amp dyno that's ever been posted to YouTube, and I've never seen an amp that exceeded its power rating by 50% at four ohms that couldn't turn around and hit its power ratings at lower levels of resistance. So I'm really excited to see what this thing will do next. <laughs> Let's give it a whirl. While we're doing the test, I want you to keep a close eye on the DC voltage. We start with a very strong 14.75 volts. And as we get into the power, the voltage starts to drop. That is normal. We're coming up on 1% THD and we get 895 watts, which is nowhere near its rated power. What the hell just happened here? And right now I'm still cranking up the volume and we're not getting any more power, but look at what's happening to the voltage. It just keeps dropping. It got down to 12.2 before I gave up and aborted the test. Maybe it's a fluke, let's try again. <laughs> This time I got 922 watts. The AMM1 is in peak hold mode. It never counts down, it only counts up. So it's gonna give you the highest possible number. And what I want you to notice is we have the same thing happening to the voltage. 
the voltage is dropping rapidly as I crank up the volume, which means our power is probably dropping as well. This time I shut the test down at clipping and we got down to 12 volts DC. What the heck just happened here? Well, here's what happened. Uh, if you flip through the owner's manual for this 100 amp power supply, it tells you not to exceed 80% of its range of power. So it's really only an 80 amp power supply. And that makes it a good tool for understanding what's gonna happen in your car if you have a stock electrical system on a good day <laughs> with the lights off while revving the engine. If you're running a newer car that has a lot of a uh, fancy electronics or a small car with a small alternator, you're gonna have even less power. And when you draw all of the power that your alternator can provide, your voltage is gonna drop and your battery will take over and power your amplifier and the car. And if you continue to play at full tilt, you'll start to drain the battery and your voltage will start to really drop even more. That is bad news. Let me show you why. Here's a plot showing what happens when voltage starts to drop. As voltage drops, you have to draw more current to maintain the same amount of power. If your voltage gets too low, anything below say 11 volts, you might start damaging your equipment and it's really not good for the rest of the car. And I'm talking about more than just dimming headlights. Really important things like fuel pumps and spark plugs and the ECU, these things all need proper voltage. Now there are a lot of excellent solutions to this problem. For example, you can install a thing known as the Big 3 upgrade. This involves running larger power and ground wires from your battery under the hood of the car. It's not uncommon for people to add a second lead acid battery. Typically people will buy a brand new AG for under the hood and then put one in the trunk. And this actually puts more stress on your stock alternator. Now your alternator has two batteries to top off. So it's an imperfect solution. You can add a lithium battery of some type or replace your stock battery with lithium batteries. Some lithium batteries actually can work with stock electrical system and some cannot. And that's a story for another video. You can add a capacitor. Stay away from the ones that look like a big oversized can of beer. Instead, get what they call a super cap or an ultra cap. You can buy these pre-bundled banks of ultra caps and add these to your electrical system. And most importantly, if you can, you should upgrade your alternator. And the problem with these solutions is that none of them other than the big three are cheap, which goes back to what I said at the beginning of the video. You can get a great deal on a powerful amplifier, but amplifiers don't make power. They use power. So a $300, 2000 watt amp will need at the very least $200 worth of battery upgrades plus a big three upgrade in order to actually get that power to the amplifier. Lithium batteries and ultra caps, well, they're gonna start at around 400 bucks. So now that cheap power doesn't look so cheap. Now I'm gearing up for some big upgrades to the truck. So I've opted to start with an alternator and a big three kit. I'm going to be using a Mechman alternator along with a big three kit that my buddy Hi-Fi Vega sent me last year. And I haven't yet figured out what I want to do with my batteries. And I would love to know y'all's thoughts on batteries. Tell me in the comments what batteries you use and, and why and how much power you're supporting with those batteries. Let me show you one more thing before we wrap up the video. I want to see how this answer amp does when it's hooked up to a subwoofer because nobody buys an amp to hook it up to resistors. We hook it up to subwoofers and we play music. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. <laughs> this Sundown Audio subwoofer is only rated for 500 watts and it is an absolute beast. I'll make sure to give you a link down in the video description. Now at the end of the test, you're going to notice that the voltage was starting to drop and I wasn't able to get any more power out of it. I think it hit something like 1150 watt. I was able to comfortably exceed the two ohm power rating and we weren't even playing at two ohms. We were playing at 3.1. My guess is that it's just more efficient at 3.1 ohms so it can make its power before the power supply ran out of steam. So you really can get a way with running this amp in a car because in your car you're not going to be playing test tones into resistors you'll be hooked up to subwoofers and playing music to learn more about how amplifier power works when you're actually playing music click right 
here. If you want to see me install this alternator, click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss the video. I'm the DIY Audio Guy and I will see you on the next adventure.